The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. And now here, Monday through Friday, 11 o'clock till noon. My pleasure to be here. This is the first day of October and um, very interesting. Market was treading higher, pulling back and treading higher pre open and then started to move higher then pull back and then poof like a rocket uh, when the uh, economic news came out at 10 o'clock now what we're looking at is a Dow that's up 150 at 13,568 the S&P is up 13 at 1453 the comp index is up 22 it's lagging a little at 3138 gold is up 5 at 1778 uh let's we've got silver up 20 at 3478 Platinum's up 15 at 1677 the high grade copper is coming back again to this trade high level trading range but in the lower band of its larger trading range so it's at um 3.78 up 2.20 now You've got crude oil up 41 cents at 92.60, but bonds are down 3.30 seconds at 149.09. So that is really interesting. Why? Because in the spectrum of um, looking at the Dow in relation, uh, relation to many, many aspects, the fact that the Dow is moving this high and bonds have held fairly well up until now. So I would have to call this, I would still have to call this a high level consolidation. Why? Because there are so many, uh, there are so many reasons for us to expect that bonds could uh, pull back and yet they are not. Why? Because the Fed has said that they're going to be there. They're going to be, uh, making an effort a very strong effort with with the momentum of all the uh, uh, with the momentum of all the, uh, the the money behind them, just to to keep bonds at a high level. They've said they want to keep bonds upon bond yields lower low, and they want to. That's Bernanke wants to keep stock prices higher so that the general public can feel more wealthy it's as simple as that now how do you how do you play this trend well as far as i'm concerned the big issue was not so much how do you play the trend but in the chapman wave methodology i had no choice i always do this when we get to a de or f in my in the dow chart and the technicals are starting to weaken we buy some protection, and that protection is in, uh, quite important only in the sense that I put a very tight stop, actually less than 1%, uh, sometimes one, it was maybe a little bit more, but this time it was less than 1%, because I wanted the market to tell me, based on all the, all the, uh, the facts that I've been looking at, whether or not I was right. Price is the arbiter of the trend. The technicals are mere confirmation, or they point to divergences, and you have to read them that way. More importantly, as I've been saying uh, for months, if the volatility index remains in the teens, in the mid-teens, here in the 15s, way below 20, it allows buying pressure to maintain, um, at worst, high-level consolidations. The moment at any point in the next month of this month of October, if the volatility index, the VIX index, I'm showing it here, Tiger TV, you can see it. It's this, these five, I call them the five quadrants. The five, these five charts here. On the left is the 120 minute Dow chart. If the 120 minute Dow chart takes out 13,653, and then closes strongly above it. It has to really, it's no use taking it out and then pulling back because that's still 
sets up the chance that you're making some kind of a double top. But if it powers through as the volatility index, which is at 1568, slips under 15, preferably underneath 1483, that'll push the market up much more. So I'm making it real clear. Now, the other thing is <clears throat> in the Chapman Wave trend gauge, that's this section over here, I can show you something that is quite phenomenal, actually, as an indicator. It has... About in the last three months, I, I don't believe it's missed more than once. I don't even think it's missed once, but it could have missed once. There was one day that I thought it missed, but actually the Dow did go to a minus two, which is which says exactly what the reading does. When when the volatility index gets very low, um, there's an indicator that I've developed called the Chapman Wave Trend Gauge, which says that the very next day, regardless how high the futures are during the night or just before the opening, sometime early in the morning, you'll get a pullback. Usually, sometimes a little later than that, but usually it's early in the morning. In this case, it was almost at the opening. Um, the Dow just slipped to minus two, but the futures had been up. The S&P had been up six. The, the Dow futures had been up about 50 or 60. So that was quite a bit of a pullback. And then the market went on for a very strong session. So that gets countered because it did go to minus the Dow. I, although the volatility index is based on the New York Stock Exchange, I use the index based on the Dow, just for my own reading. Now it's been showing for the past uh, week we've had reading where it went very high, and my reading there is that over a certain level that uh, th that, that I assess, um, there should be within one to three days inner strength. It doesn't say that the strength can last. And it might be that the market pulls back sharply, but there's a counter trend rally that is way stronger than anyone's anticipating, and then the market could pull back. In this particular instance, if the reading is there uh, on Friday, and we've had a very strong uh, rally after the kind of shaky opening, uh, early opening before 10 o'clock, and now it's very strong. So there are a couple of things we're looking at here. Let me just get this chart back. You'll see this is the, the trend lines I've drawn here are a little broad. So I don't like to count them as the, the critical ones. The critical ones that I use are the ones like on my, where is it, right here on my Dow chart that I show my subscribers in my opening call every single day. This one is very important. Why? Because you can see I drew in, now that I'm using the white charts, I can put the shading in. I like that. You can see it better. There are other things that I just identify. I still identify so much easier. Oops, on my black background chart but I'm I'm trying to I am now trying to migrate before I said I'm just going to transfer I'm going to do some of the redo some of the charts but at this point I'm going to call it migrating because I do like my subscribers to be able to print out and you know it's very expensive printing it back and you don't on black and you don't always get exactly what I'm looking for because with a black background what will happen is uh, some of the indexes uh, the moving averages don't show up very well. So here it is. The daily chart, now I didn't want to do this before, but I'm going to do it right now. There's a pattern that I look at that I call the falling axe formation. That falling axe formation says there is a P, D, E, or F in the daily chart, in any chart. After that, there's a pullback, and that pullback sees much lower lows and lower, it doesn't have to be much lower highs, but lower highs. And in this particular instance, that pattern says, or said, because now it's history, that if the Dow broke above, well, let me just do, there it is, it broke above a certain level of the trend line, not only would it be a, a positive move, but it could then retest the previous major high, which in this case is 13,653, made in the Dow on the 14th of September. We're testing that trend line right now. If by day's end the Dow is up about 190 instead of being up only 125 to 95 points, that'll be very successful because it'll say, great, now it's tackling the 13,647 level. Right now the Dow is at 13,593, and it could then try to break up into the 13,653. That's only uh, six points higher uh, than that previous peak that was made on the uh, 21st of September. Now, this trend line can become a very strong failure pattern, 
And all I can say is we're going to wait for the end of the day to see what happens. At this particular point, obviously, we have to call it quite successful. Now, the technicals, the technicals, when I talk about the technicals, I talk about the MACD. I'm showing it in this chart right here of the 120-minute chart. And that shows 12.26.9. Those are the... uh, those are the uh, moving averages. Now the red line is the slow moving average, 26. But the green line, have I got this upside down? No. <laughs> but the green line is the fast moving average, and that is a combination of the 1226 to give you a nine period differential. It is just this moment in the 120 minute DI8 uh, chart, cross positive, leg B up. And the stochastic was giving a nice divergence by being higher on the last move down to 133.36 on the 28th of September than it was at the last trough E at 133.74 on the 20th. 6th of September at 11.30. So the one was 11.30, and on the 28th it was also 11.30, but trough F are much lower down. So you can see the stochastic is rising. Those lows are higher. Animated W formation, I like that. And the MACD is making a W formation. So what I wanted to do for subscribers is I wanted to grab a stock that I felt very strongly. If this market was going to break to the upside, this particular stock would be the or should be the one to participate. It's participated now. It's also been a fabulous stock in showing over the last three months, I'd say, by anticipating the moves up and the moves down in the market. It's become my UTX used to be my leading uh, pilot light indicator, my Dow Quartet GE, IBM, Triple M, UTX. But this particular stock has suddenly taken the lead and said, folks, look at me, look at me. I know you've ignored me for a long, long time. So that's the story. And now let's go to the white charts over here. And I can show you in great detail the monthly chart. Now, this is very important. Why? Because September closed at a new recovery high. Uh, The high was 13,653 and it closed at 13,437. Yeah, about 200 points lower, but look what happened. It made a new recovery high, the 14,198 previous uh, high of uh, October 2007. Think of this. Let's, if you had to, I do keep some of the newspapers. Think of all the newspaper stories on the way down. Bank crisis, Lehman. Uh, 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 um, uh, cliff, now we're still talking about the cliff, uh, over the cliff. But all those news headlines as the market went from 14,198 to 6,469, where we actually bought the very low at 65.55 to 66.50, I believe, on the diamonds. On March the 6th, we ran it up for about a um, 49% or 50% gain. Um, and then we used another stock as a proxy for, for the Dow, which we've had on and off uh, since then. But look at this. The Dow is now making, uh, it's getting to 13,600. That's only five, 700 points away from the all-time high. Look at, consider the news of the newspapers right now. Is anybody talking about this upside rocket ship that we've seen? You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. 80% of traders fail because they don't know when to get in or out of a market, and all because no one taught them how to read the signs. You see, the stock market has a universal language called Japanese candlesticks, and each day, the buyers and sellers, the bulls and bears, go to work and build signs. This language has been around for thousands of years, and it's easy to learn. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters Show, and I'm a master sign builder. Download my free report, Candlesticks, The Speed of Trust, on the homepage of TFNN.com for one of the best-kept candlestick secrets. I'll also be conducting an online course Friday, October 19th, to teach you the language of the market's sign builders. You'll learn the best entry and exit techniques and strategies that will create extraordinary rewards. The course will be archived so you can review it as many times as you like because trading or investing without learning this language is like running a red light. It's an accident waiting to happen and there's no airbags or seatbelts. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. What type of investor are you? conservative, moderate, or aggressive. No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. We are back. We are back at... Uh, let me just take this one second to finish this particular chart. Uh, uh, um, okay. So, um, okay, so Dow is now up 154, S&P is up uh, 14, the um, comp is up 21. Dow is actually doing on a percentage basis way better than the S&P, it's up 1.15%, uh, S&P is up 0.98%. So this is a very interesting, it's not a, it's not a, a, a dichotomy that I, I particularly like. Uh, 500 stocks obviously have greater weighting uh, than the, uh, than the, Near 30 stocks, but still, uh, Dow is doing really well. well. Let's go to our first caller. We've got George in New York. Hi, George. How are you? Basil, good morning. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Good, good. Hope you enjoyed your holidays. Uh, yes, I did. Thank you very much. Very good. Excellent. Uh, today, I wanted to ride the Elka wave with uh, emphasis, I-N-F-Y. So I can't remember. What exactly do they do? They are in uh, services, uh, backroom services, and it's uh, on the order of uh, Cognizant with technology. Okay, now it's a uh, very high growth company. All right, because if if memory serves, were they they involved with the financial services industry? Um, not directly. No, it's okay. more back office. That would be fact set. Which uh, okay. Ah, yeah. Service. Okay. Very good. So now, folks, what we're looking at is I N F Y, Infosystems Inc. 
limited. And uh, it's trading at 49.65. It's up a dollar eleven. At, uh, so that's at 49.65, and that's a new recovery high. It made an all-time high. It made a low. If you're looking at my charts, let me just stretch this one out. You're looking at the monthly chart. I haven't, I haven't, I had this on my old system, and disappeared from my old system. So I quickly Basil, did. This is the IT services. I okay, good. IT services. It made a low on. In uh, November of 2008, at 20.24, it went peak A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now, some of you wonder, wow, 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 G, how come you can get a G? If you follow the fast-moving average here of the MACD, you'll see that it is consistently written up. There were no sell signals there, so all I did was I continued the lettering. So those are the techniques that I like to teach when I teach uh, the about the Chapman wave. And basically, it went to the peak G, at uh, 77.73 January of 2011, and it's come down in almost like a price-time match, and then all of a sudden it slowed down the move to the downside. It held the doji candle of August of 2009 between 44 and 39. It made a low just recently of 37.93 in July, and now there's a new leg up in the daily. So the daily says, yes, last month closed above the 9 period moving average, but it's done that before and then failed. The difference now is the MACD is trying to turn up, and the stochastic has turned very nicely from the teens to from about 12 percent now to 21.64 in the monthly so so far the monthly says downtrend is the downtrend label has to be in place but within it there's a counter trend that says yes it's picking up steam to the upside leg a it needs a lot more evidence it needs to really get to about 55 51 Point sixty, somewhere around there. So it's about another two points higher in the mm -hmm. monthly to say, aha, now the monthly is going to really improve. But wait a minute, the weekly is looking very good with the stochastic at 96%. The MACD is expanding. I like that very much. And the 200 period moving average is 50.96, a dollar twenty away. And it says there's a real good chance that a leg C or a leg D will get towards the 50.96. And there's tremendous support in the candle, the weekly candle, at between... Uh, 4888 to 4680. So that's kind of wide, but that, that gives you the worst case scenario, at least in the next two weeks. Now, the daily is the one that's impressive. There was another PG. Now, stocks that tend to make certain waveforms in the Chapman mm -hmm. wave, that is, continue to make that. So it made a G in the daily just as the monthly did. And fascinatingly enough, this, it made a strong leg A up in the daily. Which the, which the monthly chart is attempting to do, but the weekly chart has already succeeded in doing by going to A, B, and now in leg C. I've got a leg D. Now I'm going to talk about something that I love to talk about, and that is what, the, what certain moving averages do when they come into focus and how you can just totally ignore them when they're out of focus. When Infosystems uh, broke... Underneath the two, the, underneath the nine period exponential moving average back in uh, the 12th of April of 2012, it also broke from the 200 period moving average. I'll show this chart and I'll discuss it. You, do you have a position in this? Uh, actually, I had sold naked puts and now I'm looking to go long as well. Excellent. I'll be right back with George in New York looking at Infosystems. George always makes Info great calls. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now.
you've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor, and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. And we are on right now with Georgia, New York. And we're looking at INFY Infosys. And uh, it is trading at forty nine seventy one up a dollar seventeen. And Georgia's had a fantastic trade by selling the puts. Lower down, that means he's pocketed the premium, and now he's thinking of, because of the strength of the stock, possibly going long. Now right. let me show you my analysis. The daily chart has made a left side, right side price time match from the gap, that huge gap down. And I'm not sure, this is so interesting. I've almost got, I've had to start a whole new section in my uh, notebook that I'm doing here on all the different chart patterns on stocks that gap down huge and then power right through those gaps to the upside, and some of them going on to make all-time highs. This is contrary to what normally you'd be thinking about gaps. And not one, not dozens, but literally many, many stocks have done that uh, since, uh, I'd say, since about April. Now, what we're looking at here, is this going to be one of those stocks that fills the gap from 55.24 on the 12th of April to the, the very next day, it gaps down the highs 49.34. Now, I'm not sure if it was a product disappointment or an earnings uh, disappointment. Uh, do, you, do you know anything about yes. that? Yes, they were forecasting that uh, the earnings going forward were going to be lower. Not lower, they were concerned with the European slowdown as well as the Asian slowdown for the IT services area. So it hadn't so with happened. That, 
with that, they started to warn. Okay, so it hadn't actually happened. What they did is that they were warning a little bit like, uh, who was it, Correct. Caterpillar, just recently? But just for the tigers and tigresses, again, just going on, on things fundamentally, the sales for the last 10 years have been almost 22%. Your free cash flow growth has been 20%. Hmm. And your earnings per share has been 21%. And your current assets are six and a half to one with no debt. Well, I'm going to make a suggestion here. The, you, do you still have the puts? Are you going to oh, keep yes, the puts? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. So that's... That so is, what I did was my margin of safety was around the 40 mark, so I sold puts at 45 so I could get in at 40 purposely. Okay. All right. So now this is what I would, li I would I'd like you to consider, mm -hmm. that the, 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 the trend in both the short term and the intermediate term at this particular point appears to be up, and the technicals are confirming that in the weekly. The daily is just a little bit out of whack because it's getting towards that gap area. Now what's important about this is that I've got a trend line that says on the upside the resistance should come in anywhere between, it depends on what day. If it was today, it would be 50.13. If it's tomorrow, it'll be 50.33. So you've got about a 20%, 20 cent increment each day to the upside. That is a resistance. If it's able in the next two days just to power into the 50, oh, I would say 51.70 to the 52.30 area, then what it's done is it's turned the 48.11, $48.11, mm -hmm. nine period exponential moving average, into tremendous support, and it could even dip a little bit lower into the 47.88 level of, um, uh, of the 26. That's, uh, that's if two things happen. One is, if it turns around... Uh, and it's repelled by this line, then my suspicion is based on this uh, on this horizontal trend line that goes all the way back to the high of uh, the 13th of April at 49.34. That's the area of resistance that we're hitting right now. We've gapped above it, and we're holding above it. So my my 120-minute chart says it should be either around here or one more pop to the upside, and then you can start a pullback. Now, I'm going to recommend that you have two positions. One position you put in on a, on a buy, but it's a small position because it's a position that says, I'm going, to, I'm going to nibble here because if the market continues higher, this chart mm -hmm. is indicating that it's now a market participant and it should go, and I might not get my second position, so I want to have some position. But it's not a big position. Why? Because everything about it says that the area between 48.30 and 47, I'd even go so far as to say a sudden pullback to 40, 46.80 is possible. That's the area that really is the containment area and says even if it was to go lower, you should be able to get out at that price at some point because that's that's kind of, kind of like a fulcrum line. It's like a magnet up and down. So yes. that's my my recommendation to to nibble. And normally I would say you can just start a tiny position right here, but there's a lot about this chart that says that you will probably have a good chance to buy it at about forty eight twenty to forty seven ninety. So my recommendation is two positions. One is. So you could nibble either here or wait for you know a fifty to sixty percent because you're also looking at the daily chart for a possible uh, entry at forty two thirty seven in case we get a whopping correction in October. Now, well, that's that's what I'm saying. That I would think of it as two I positions. Because I think third quarter earnings are not going to be good across the board. Oh, when so will I they, think, when uh, they the come out? Will get scared and start coming down at that point. For when will they come out on this particular? So when will they come out in the stock? If it's three months' time, it's uh, almost there. October, May, June, I'm, July, I'm August, September, October. Particular stock per se, because we also have, um, you know, Windows 8 coming out, but it's not out as yet. So I think a number of technology companies are going to report slower Q3 earnings. And with that said, you know, some stocks will come down in sympathy.
Ah, so I can now I get the sense of what you're looking at. You're not even looking at it as a potential entry point on the long side until you feel comfortable that it's pulled back enough, right? Y yeah, this way I okay. can make more on the upside. Then I'm going to say to you, but have I'm patience. More long -term. Right. On the long term, you, I, I would definitely say any pullback below 4680, start a small position. And then you can just arbitrarily put something in at the gap of. 4301 something at 4320 you One. just put that in and if it's hit it's hit if it's not it's not understood appreciate it very good and congratulations fabulous call thank you basil and thanks for a great show as usual thank you very much for calling george i Have appreciate it Enjoy. You too. So, folks, now I, I want you. I want you to spend a little time with George because George looks at stocks both technically, but a lot more fundamentally. And he's over the years. If you've listened to George, he's come up with some really good ideas and ideas that have uh, the weight of the positives of the fundamentals together with the technicals, and I think that's terrific. Congratulations, and I really hope that our listeners are benefiting. Don't go diving to this right now just because we're discussing it. Do your homework. But that kind of thinking I like very much. Why? Because the monthly chart has had the opportunity with a left side, right side price tie move to go to the doji candle of uh, August of 2009, down between 44.48 and 39.14, and what it's done, it's gone right into the middle at 37.93 and it's rallying. So that says, at least in the intermediate term, there could be a very nice rally in Infosys from this level, have a pullback somewhere into the mid 40s, and then have another move up, and then it could make the whole area of 57 to 60.67 in February of 2012, that whole area will be tremendous resistance. But it, that's a nice percentage gain. So think about it and uh, just consider it another way of looking at the market um, through uh, different types of stocks. Now here's something else that I wanted to do. The world in the, in, in the globe, was it the New York Times or the globe? I, I read just the other day, world's biggest Ferris wheel New York City, you know, like London has that big wheel that they were going to only put up for the, for the, some, some anniversary. Then they kept it and now it's become an icon. You remember the Eiffel Tower? Eiffel Tower was put up and it was only going to be for a short while. And so many people came looking to look at it. It was, it was it kept there. Um, do you know that the Statue of Liberty given by France uh, to the United States as a present was, kind of in the warehouse for a long time. Nobody actually wanted to do it. Find it was put up and there was a lot of hissing and cussing and what is this and where's what and now look at it today. These huge um icons become like skyscrapers, an icon to a city, city's ego. And I consider that that's something to be um, aware of. We've got, I spoke about the other day, that the, you've got a race on in China to build the world's tallest mile high building. I'll say it again, a building a mile high. And still, of course, you know that they, you couldn't have got the skyscrapers in the 1920s without Otis producing the elevator that could take you up at that speed that was required. And also the distance, nothing like it had been uh, done before. Um, you had other buildings in New York. I'm trying to think of the Metro, Metropolitan Life. Well, I think it was it was an insurance company that was the tallest building for a long time. But to break through, it was ground. So when the age of technology comes together with ego, with our, we call it man's ego or human's ego, um, this is when you get these icons. And invariably, they create the backdrop for what eventually turns out to be very often, like the Empire State Building, like the uh, Petronas Towers, like the uh, 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 um, Burj, uh, whatever they changed the name to, in in uh, skyscraper uh, in um, uh, Arab Emirates, you've got to consider that uh, you know we've got to look at these and say, woohoo, things are starting to come to a head. Okay, now let's talk about some other things. You've got, um, I wanted to go through all the different, uh, um, 
ETFs, etc., or currency pairs, whatever it is that I look at. Look, that that phantom peak that I use for the 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 euro dollar to give a peak D Doji top on the 17th of September. Look, it's pulled back from the 1.317 area to today's candle, which is attempting in the 120-minute chart to at least try to form a bounce base. Now, the stochastic has rallied very sharply, not commensurate with the price yet. So until the euro can break above 1.3, I would say close above 1.3. This has to be considered kind of a counter trend, a little a rally attempt at this particular point. The weekly chart has made a peak B, and that monthly chart has made a single leg A to the upside, and that has to be monitored closely. Now, if you look at the um, the dollar index, D, uh, DXY, the do oops, dollar DXY, you see I've been migrating, getting my, my Dubai, yes, thank you, <laughs> oh, well, I did remember Dubai, but I just want to do, uh, uh, generalize it, so you've got um, the dollar index at 79.67, down 27, now look at this, this is a technique that I, I discuss a lot in my CD Introducing the Chapter Rate Methodology, I discuss this in great de detail, the quicker you go peak A, B, C, D, in a Chapman Wave buy mode, especially without the price movement, the quicker you're going to get a pullback. So this leg D now almost at the lows in the dollar index, a high of 80.15 this morning, now trading at 79.67, a low 79.57 says, just be a bit careful here. It doesn't mean to say that the dollar is going to plunge to a new uh, recovery low, but it does say be careful because this kind of quick move up and then down, says that certain levels have to hold, but if they don't hold, be careful. And here's what I'm looking at. If the dollar goes underneath the candle of 79.05, the candle of the 21st of September, closes under it, you can expect a, a Chapman Wave dreaded H, that lowercase h, where it re wants to retest the low of 78.60, made on the uh, 14th of, of September, but at this particular point, all I'm expecting is that it tests the 7936 level of Friday. If it closes above that and holds, then you could see another pop to the upside. And 80.53, the 200 period exponential moving average, would in fact be um, uh, be the the level to look at. Now I've been asked, would I look at the monthly chart of the dollar index? Well, it's not even the monthly chart of the dollar index in terms of the nine period moving average, which has been a beautiful resistance support level going on for actually since the high, <laughs> since the breakdown of the high where it went to 121, breakdown at 114.72 April of 2002 in the monthly chart. You can see, using this one technical tool, it's just been a beautiful tool to say, be careful. When it's underneath, it can stay underneath for a little while, and this month is going to be the key. Does it go back underneath 79.70, I think is the level right now? Or does it start to turn it into a support level? So I'm going to be watching that, but it is the pattern of the dreaded H that becomes an M, that creates a third M, because that M is the one, that arch, I'm sorry, is the one that has the potential either to power above the previous most important arch high, that was 88.71, or start to break down and retest the most important levels, and that would be between 72.80 and 70.70. So this month is very important for the dollar because of the chart pattern. This third H... Specialist has been successful by never going under 70.70. Should be the one that takes it above 87.02. Not necessarily this month, but that's where it should go to. So, I'll be back. 877-927-664. I'd love to take your calls in this last segment. Save me. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. 
Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Time is the great equalizer of all mankind. Time doesn't care about winners or losers, who succeeds or fails. Time only cares that you played the game. Question, are you playing the money game? Is your money working as hard for you as you are for it? I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, a daily trading and investment newsletter service, and we're celebrating our one-year anniversary. In year one, we generated a 30% profit. Plus, I provided 26 hours of live coaching to my clients. My daily newsletter service is available by 8 a.m. each day and covers the stock, futures, currency, and commodity markets, along with all the current patterns that you can trade. Each newsletter is packed with education, and it's yours for as little as $3 per day. And for the next 30 days, you can try it risk-free. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and begin your journey to great wealth today. If you're waiting for a better tomorrow, remember this. Today's tomorrow will soon be yesterday, and your clock is ticking. Mastering probability. Now is your time. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Uh, hi, folks. Just before we go on, I had a question of the dinner about a high-grade copper monthly chart. Monthly chart is above the line EMA, but it's the weekly chart that has a stochastic at 93% that I'm, I'm impressed with. So high-grade copper so far is making high-level consolidation after a peak B. If high-grade copper closes underneath 3.67, that's a real uh, 3.66, that's a real problem. If it breaks out above 3.83, Two five this week. This is the continuous contract. That's going to be very positive, and that'll say to me, "Aha, that's working." I'm I'm watching closely to watch the TLT, which is actually just pulling back very mildly, holding the nine period exponential moving average. The volatility index is actually only down ten cents, moving up a little bit. I'm watching this particular spike today very closely. There are a number of reasons why. I need to see, I need to be convinced the Dow is going to the 13,620s and holding by Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, certainly by Thursday, it needs to be well above 13,600s if this is going to be the breakout. I'm a little concerned that this is the, uh, that high-level consolidation is still going on. So we've got a caller waiting online, and we've got Chris in San Antonio. Hi, Chris, how are you? Doing good, Bethel. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Hey, Basil, uh, last week uh, I missed getting in TJX. Uh, you know, it, it went down pretty good, pretty proud. Right. It. And today it, ga it gapped up, so I went ahead and got in at 45.50. Uh, and I was wondering, what do you think about 
you're looking at the it. you're looking at the long or the short side. The short side. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, I just wanted to clarify for the listeners. You know, the way this is acted, your risk is so slight. All it has to do go one penny above the previous high, forty six sixty seven, and then I would say even though it could double top, that should be your stop. So you've got a stop of one and a quarter points on a stock that's making a, a potential peak E in the monthly chart. And that, even though the technicals are still very good, if you look at the technicals of the uh, weekly chart, the technicals are failing very poorly. So I'm, a, I'm of the impression that TJX will not close above, or at least break above 46.67. I don't think it'll close above, the, even if it goes a, above it. But uh, that's the way I'm looking at it. More importantly, if this week by Friday it takes out 43.95, for the low of last week, that'll confirm for me it's starting to make lower lows and lower highs. Right now, all you can do is say, I've got a very high risk, um, a very high reward, low risk probability because you've got about a one and a quarter point risk of the upside. If it fails and it takes out the left side, right side price time match of the low of uh, going back to the 23rd of July, 43.54, all of a sudden you've got some kind of conviction that that weekly chart is going to kick in with those strong negative technicals. So I, the, will you, you're prepared to take a one and a quarter point buy stop. If you are, I think you're in a good position. Okay, well, thank you very much. That's what I wanted to hear. Okay, and not only that, this has been one of the strongest stocks in the stock market for uh, for three years. So this is your opportunity now to see at least a pullback to 41.99, the nine-period exponential moving average in the weekly chart, if it works. And I think it's a high-reward, lower-risk uh, possibility. So thank you for calling. So, folks, we're about to wrap up. Let me just give you my parameters for the Dow and keep watching the volatility index in bonds because if bonds... Uh, start to move higher from here. If the TLT goes to 124.80 to 125.20, then it's gonna, there's a chance that it's gonna be saying, hmm, this rally is very selective and that the high level consolidation can continue and the parameters of the volatility indexes is, is if, if the VIX goes above six now, if the VIX goes above 17.08, then this market will pull, be pulling back. But if the volatility index breaks under 15, upside continues, and that's the way I'm looking at it. So parameters are supported 30,470 right now, and breakout if it goes to about 13,650.